right, the purpose of today's video is to look at some uh, um, strategies for when, uh, when trying to solve quadratic problems, you know, basically story problems that deal with quadratic functions, and that's what we're trying to do. But what if the work becomes too complicated to just use natural intuition? What other strategies do we have? For example, we've got this hockey team and it's playing in arena, 15,000 spectators. They know that if they charge $14, they can not fill all the seats, they'll get 9,500 seats. Um, but they also find out that they'll get more seats in the stadium if they just lower the price. For every dollar they lower the price, they can get an extra thousand more fans. So what we're supposed to do is find a function that models revenue in terms of ticket price. So once we have that equation, we can figure out um, how much to charge how much not to charge because we don't want to be so expensive that nobody comes anymore and this one is find the price that maximizes revenue from ticket sales so of course that's the ultimate goal is we want to figure out what should we set the price so that we get as much money from ticket sales as possible doesn't necessarily mean we're going to sell out we're going to make as much money as possible maximum revenue so first we got to do is think about this we have to more than anything we have to know what our variables are um, one of the variables is revenue, and that's what we're trying to maximize. Revenue is the money that we receive from sales. So we're trying to make as most money as we can. Um, and here's some other things that I know. If I let the ticket price be $14, now why am I talking about ticket price? Because in terms of ticket price, that's the independent variable ticket price is going to affect revenue. So whatever I charge is going to determine how much money I make. Well, one thing I know is if we charge $14, we get 9,500 seats and if we multiply 9,500 people times $14 per seat, it gives me a grand total of $133,000. Now, I'm trying to understand what happens here, and what I know is if I lower the price, I get 1,000 more people, and I don't know exactly what that means, so what I'm going to do is organize my information in a table. I have the ticket price as the independent variable. Again, I know that because it says as a function of, or in terms of, ticket price. So I know I have $14, 9,500 pe people. If I charge $1,300, I'm going to get 1,000 more people. If I charge $12, I'm going to get 1,000 more people than that, and so on. What this enables me to do is to recognize that for every dollar down, I'm going to add $1,000 more. $2 lower gives me 2,000 more people. $3 lower, 3,000 more people. Now, here's how we express this algebraically. If I let T be any ticket price, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 9,500 fans that I had from $14, I'm going to add $1,000, and this is the tricky part, for every dollar below 14. So watch, T is dollars, right? So we say every dollar below 14 adds $1,000 to the already 9,500. So it reads in common sense logic fashion. Now some students have a problem with that. So let's try another attack. Here I see that the number of stands is increasing at a constant rate, the number of people in the stands. We get an extra thousand people for every dollar down. This seems like a negative sloping kind of problem. <clears throat> and in fact, that's exactly what I have. That is to say, if the price goes up, then sales go down. So the slope is going to be negative 1,000 because these all differ by 1,000 and one of the points on the line is 149500. So I could use point slope formula to get the equation of the line. Hope you remember how to use that one. It's like walking at home. Here's our slope, here's the x, here's the y. Um, and here's the equation I have down at the bottom. If I write it out, well, it's practically the same thing. Hold on a second. What just happened there? There we go. So here, <clears throat> it's minus 1,000 and x minus 14, and here we have positive 1,000 and then positive 14 minus t or x. So here we can see we just take that negative right here and distribute it in here and here, and that reverses the two on the inside. So we can see this equation here using logic and reason is the same as this equation here using point slope form. The point is, I promise you that when you're working with these kinds of problems, you will see situations that have linear functions within them that will eventually turn around and produce quadratic functions. If you see a linear relationship, don't forget all the stuff we spent last semester and last year learning about. Make sure you apply this somewhere um, during your homework so that you remember how to use it. So anyway, uh, continuing on with the, the process then, I've got all the ticket sales uh, all worked out. And just to make sure that it's valid, I put in a $10 ticket price and got uh, um, 13,500 people. And I was able to add 1,000 or 4,000 people total, um, which is 1,000 per dollar increase. In other words, I know my equation is working the way it's supposed to. Um, so 
the next thing that I do is I'm going to just clean that equation up by distributing the 1,000 and then collecting like terms. And so now I have a sales function, which is a linear function. And we're in a quadratic functions unit, so I'm not, I don't think I'm done yet. Because what it said is um, I have to model the revenue in terms of ticket price. I, all I have here is sales. So to answer the question regarding revenue, um, I, I recognize that I could take the, the sales times the price, and that gives me my revenue. If I charge 13, I would take $13 times 10,000, the extra 1,000 people, 10,500 people will give me my total revenue. Which means if I had T ticket sales, or ticket price, I would get, as we just figured out in the last section, uh, 23,500 minus 1,000 T fans. And if we multiply T times 23,500 minus 10,000 T, not only is that quadratic, but that is the equation that will give me revenue as a function of ticket price. In other words, boosh, here it is. So uh, now we can actually start answering the rest of the questions, which is, you know, um, there's the function. Part uh, B, what ticket price is so high that no one wants to go? Uh, zero revenue means no one wants to go. Um, otherwise, we could do the zero sales question. But regardless, uh, we want zero revenue. In order to get zero revenue, uh, we could either charge zero, which makes sense, or we could charge uh, $23.50. If we charge $23.50, nobody will, will go to the hockey game. So $23.50 is too much to charge. Um, and then finally, we need to maximize ticket sales. And that's straight up using the opposite of B over 2A. Um, and then we could even uh, put that into the equation to get the maximum revenue. So that, that, once we have the equation, all the rest of the work should be pretty straightforward. I know the bulk of our struggle is going to be coming up with the equation itself. So here um, is an example of using a table um, of values to help us spot trends. We can spot whether the trend is uh, linear. And then we could use all of our linear functions information, or we can spot that we keep doing the same thing to the numbers over and over. Every time I take price times sales and multiply to get revenue, uh, that means even if I don't know the price, like it was T, I can multiply that by the sales, which I don't know, but they also depend on T, and I can multiply them together to get the total revenue. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, have a great day.